welcome you on this Father's Day. We pray God's blessing to you. Mr. Ham, God bless. Good to see you. Out of Matthew 8, Matthew 1, 18 to 25, I'd like to read verses 19 and 20 again. And it says, And her husband, Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And if I were going to give you a thought to hang your hat on this Father's Day out of this Christmas scripture, it, be, it would be God chose a father for his son. God chose a father for his son. Our Father and our God, we come humbly before you. Knowing, oh God, we could have done nothing to earn or deserve this special privilege. But Father, we step out of us, our anxiousness, our nervousness, our worry, and into your anointing. The kind of anointing that would make preaching possible. The kind of anointing, oh God, that would inspire these fathers this day to be the more of what you call them to be. We trust you with all that we are. And we ask that you be glorified and pleased. Amen. 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 God chose a father for his son. I know when we started reading the scripture, I know y'all said, why is, she, why is she talking about Christmas? But if you know Joseph is never talked about, never mentioned until Christmas, when he's trying to get rid of Mary and he, he marries her anyway. But Joseph is a very special example in the word. On this Father's Day, I'm going to share a Christmas sermon Although that is not exactly true, I'm going to talk to you about a father who's often overlooked and only mentioned at Christmas time. I want to talk to you about Joseph, the husband of Mary, the adopted father of Jesus. It seems to me that we often overlook the fact that God, in his sovereignty, chose Mary to be the one to give birth to the Son of God but that he also in his province chose Joseph to be a father to his son Jesus and to raise him into manhood, a special responsibility. God chose both Mary and Joseph to be the parents of the Lord of glory. It seems to me that this great truth demonstrates for us the role of a father is very important in the life of a family. Amen. Amen. In other words, Fathers are not only needed for the physical act of conceiving a child. Okay, I didn't get one, so I'm going to say that one again. Fathers are not only important for the physical act of conceiving a child. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but God reminds us that they are also needed for the spiritual act of raising children. Amen. We know, of course, the child was conceived in the womb of Mary by the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. A miracle took place, so there was no need for a man to be involved in this part of conception. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. But God wants us to realize the importance of a father's role when it comes to raising and developing a child into adulthood. Let me just stop and say um, a word to single parents that are here today. Don't think for a moment that your child is beyond hope because their father is gone or their mother is gone. But let me, let me assure you that it's not the case at all. And in my years of ministry and even in my own personal life, as a single mother, I have known many single fathers who raised their children in the nurture of the Lord to be highly successful in life. It is possible uh -huh. and very successful with their walk with the Lord. But I also realize that single parents face difficulties trying to bring some measure of balance between time, money, schedules, and at the same time have a personal life. Let me tell you, personal life 
is not on the back burner, it's way in the other apartment when you're trying to raise a child alone. So single parents, today we salute you and may God bless you for your diligence. Nevertheless, the normal pattern or the godly parent for children is to be raised with the mother and the father. So Joseph was chosen just like Mary was chosen. And just as God had chosen a godly young woman to bring forth the child, he also chose a godly man to be the father of that child. And what a model of fatherhood Joseph was. So on this Father's Day, I want to share with you some of the traits God must have seen in Joseph that is still very much needed today in today's fathers. The first thing I want you to see is Joseph was a loving man. Look at verses 18 and 19, and it says, this is how Joseph, the, this is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to a man, Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her fiance, was a good man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement in secret. The word I use for engaged is really the word betrothed or promised to. But the betrothal was much more like a 12 month binding contract between the two people and the couple's parents. Why 12 months? Because it was to make sure the bride was pure. And within that time frame, a pregnancy would show up if it was going to show up. Luke's gospel tells us that when the angel Gabriel came to Mary and tells her of God's plan, Mary was astonished, perplexed, and even afraid. But it was only after the angel talked her through it did she seem to get some peace on the matter. She said and said to the angel, be it unto me, as thou hast said, like I give myself back to God. The Bible does not tell us how Joseph learned that Mary was pregnant, presumably by someone else. Now this news must have been a staggering blow to him. His bride-to-be had betrayed him. In his mind, she had been sleeping around and most fiancés would have exploded in vindictive rage. After all, according to the Old Testament law, he could have her taken outside the city and stoned to death, but he didn't. Even before God revealed his plan, Joseph's love and character is revealed. The Bible tells us in verse 19 that Joseph was a good man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. Before God's divine revelation, Joseph didn't have any vengeance or bitterness in his heart toward Mary. Joseph was a kind man who must have truly loved this young girl. The second thing we see is that Joseph was a caring father. Joseph's character is also revealed in how he cared for and impacted the life of Christ. He protected him from the hatred of Herod and eventually taught him the trade of carpentry. In other words, Joseph received Jesus as his own son, the one whom the rest of the world would reject. But today we are living in a time when we see men who are prepared to abandon their role and responsibility as fathers toward children, especially children that they did not create. Can I get a amen? amen. Men are opting out of the father role because it costs time, it costs money, it's too much effort, or because of their responsibility, or even because of their own irresponsibility. But the Bible says in 1 Timothy 5, 8, but if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. A child begins life ununited with his or her mother. The child literally is fused into the mother's body. And even after birth, the infant is dependent on his mother. She's the source of the baby's nourishment and sense of security. The job of raising infants and young children is traditionally, traditionally delegated to the mother, while fathers represent the world outside the home. However, in these times, fathers have come to be seen as capable of bonding very early with infants. 
but while it is possible for a man to bond with him, that such tender intimacy is rare. I even asked um, June while he, he was FaceTiming me, showing me the baby after Nikki had given birth. And I said, June, take the baby and let Nikki get some rest. Oh, it's too little. <laughs> the baby's here. Let her get some rest. I can't hold the baby. I went, okay. There's still hope. Let's hope. Let's hope that he'll give her some rest. Children enter the world like tiny sponges, ready to absorb every little impression about themselves and their identity. And sooner or later, maybe without even saying it out loud, they wonder, am I special? Am I valuable? Am I good? Does anyone really love me? Psychologists have discovered that fathers play a primary role in answering those questions. Not only for the boys, but especially for girls. I'm convinced that one of the greatest tragedies in today's society is lost fathering. I believe with all my heart that for many people, the father-child relationship defines their entire lives. It affects dating, it affects, affects marriage, it affects relationships, and even their self-confidence, their sexuality, and work performance. Surely we need more men like Joseph who are caring fathers, even for children that they did not create. The third thing we see is that Joseph was a man of faith and of courage. He was a man of faith. In a time when it seemed as if Joseph's life was coming unraveled, he was willing to put aside his plan to follow God. Let me say that one more time. His plans laid out. He knew he was going to marry Mary, where they were going to live, excuse me, what kind of income he'd have, how many children he wanted. And everything became unraveled in a moment. But he let those raggedy plans lay on the floor and say, God, I trust you. With all of my tomorrows, like I trusted you with all of my yesterdays. That's some kind of saying. Amen? Amen. He was willing to follow God, even though it didn't look like what he planned. It, it didn't work out like he wanted to. And as we look at verses 20 and 21 in this chapter, as he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. First of all, he found out she was pregnant and the baby isn't his. He was willing not to shame her, but as quietly as he could to, to allow the divorce to happen. And now everything he that he had hoped for is shattered. And now the angel saying, you need to take this woman as your wife. This is God's plan for you. How many of you men, fathers, husbands, boyfriends have said, okay, Lord, whatever, it's not working out like I want, but I want your plan for me. I want what you want for me. Mm -hmm. But Lord, she fine as wine. Coke bottle and everything. I want her. And God said, no, no. Remember, three answers. God answers prayers. No. Yes. And not now. How many of you have heard not now and said, oh, but I want her. I need her. Well, I can talk about the women too, but I won't because this is Father's Day. But nevertheless, he laid aside his plans and said, God, whatever you desire of me. All this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message to the prophet. The virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and you will call him Emmanuel, which is interpreted God is with us. There seems to be two things here. Joseph was willing to listen to what the angel was actually saying to him, and he was familiar with the prophetic scriptures concerning the Messiah. Let me say that again. He was willing to have an ear to hear what God said, but he was familiar enough with the scripture to know that that's what the angel was saying to him. Uh -huh. So he knew the word, and he had a willingness to live the word out. Amen. amen. Men, amen. Amen. Men. 
Ezekiel 18 and 9 says, and the just shall live by faith. Habakkuk 2 and 4 says, and, they, and the just shall live by faith. Romans 7, 1, Romans 1, 17 says, and the just shall live by faith. What, what does that tell you? The just shall live by faith. Now, there was nothing wrong with what Joseph had decided. But even though that was his decision, he lived by faith. Trusting, he trusted God. Yes, he did. Romans 10 and 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith came by hearing for Joseph, the angel, and then hearing the word of God as it was taught in the temple. So you need to hear the word and know the word so you can live the word. That's for men and women. Just, just give you a little free one today. Amen. So, child of God, faith and the word are linked together. Joseph was able to live by faith because he was grounded in the word. Let me say that again. Joseph was able to live by faith because he was set, grounded, solidified in the word of God. He knew what the angel said was according to the word because he had heard it preached in the temple. As time passes, in the second chapter of Matthew, it says, And an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up and go to, go to Egypt with the child and his mother. Stay there until I tell you to return, because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. That night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother, and stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord has spoken through the prophet. I call my son out of Egypt. When God spoke, Joseph immediately obeyed. When God spoke, Joseph immediately obeyed. Amen. That means you have to have an ear Amen. to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Amen. Amen. Men, you are the protector, the provider, the provision, the, the parole, paroler of your family. I mean, you know, patroller, paroler, whatever. Y'all know what I'm saying. You're the protector. You're the warrior. And you have to have an ear to hear what God is saying. Because he might say, get up. Move now to protect your family. That's what Joseph did. He closed, Joseph closed his business down and left the city. It takes faith to pack your bags and head off to a foreign country with no prospects, no planning. Simply on the basis is that's what God said. Amen. He had faith strong enough to obey God's will in his life, and he could have made excuses to stay where he was, but his faith caused him to say, yes, Lord. The fourth thing we can see is that Joseph was a man of worship. In the second chapter of Luke, it says, every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. And when, Joseph, when Jesus was 12, they attended the festival as usual. So it was their practice. It is obvious that Joseph was a regular in his worship. And he set the, he set the example for the rest of his family. Did you hear the little boy who was playing on a Sunday morning while his dad was in his lounge chair reading the Sunday paper? And the story goes that the father looked to the son and said, son, get yourself ready for church. The little boy said, well, are you coming with me today, Dad? The father said, no, I'm not coming, but I want you to hurry up and get ready so I can take you. The little boy said, Dad, did you used to go to church when you were a boy? He said, I most certainly did, as he walked away from the boy. And the boy said, yeah, and I bet it won't do me any good either. It is true, our kids are watching our life and our faithfulness. Father's Day is a day set aside to honor fathers, but my challenge to the fathers is to honor your family by being the kind of father God has ordained you to be. My challenge, be the kind of father. And I'm not just talking about fathers who create children out of their loins. Some of us had our nieces and nephews some of us have little cousins that we mentor and watch over. Be the kind of father that impacts their lives positively anyway. Amen. Oh, y'all got that? Amen. 
grandfathers. Be the kind of grandfather God is pleased with. Be the kind of uncle God is pleased with. Because he just didn't allow Mary to bring forth Jesus and, and raise him. He chose also that a father should be in his life. If you are not saved, why not? Don't have an answer for that. If you're not saved, why not today? Today is a good day to be saved. And if not today, then when? Choose you this day whom you will serve. Because what? Tomorrow is not promised. You may enjoy your Father's Day, cook out your Father's Day meal, but if you don't know Jesus in the pardoning of your sins, and you don't wake up tomorrow, I guarantee you will have to choose heaven or hell. And you can choose heaven all you want. If you haven't done the work to get there, I know where you're going. And I'm just going to say amen and, and move on. <laughs> God ordained a father for Jesus. And if you have children, grandchildren, nieces, and nephews, God has ordained you to be an honorable example before them. Amen. Amen. I pray a wonderful Father's Day to each of you. Amen. Fathers that are fathers from the natural standpoint, from the emotional standpoint, from the, from the heart standpoint. Be an example that God is pleased with. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We thank you for those that have joined us here in the sanctuary and those that have joined us on Facebook. We honor fathers. And however you are loving, caring, overseeing children, be the example that God is pleased with. If you want prayer, please leave it in the comment section and we will pray for you. The um, donations are taken under Cash App Greater Grace CC. Amen. Amen. God bless you.